Distilled Tarot. My name is Shannon. I'll be guiding you through this week's reading. This is going to be our weekly reading for July 11th through the 17th, 2023. At the heart of your reading, we have the Ten of Wands. You're almost done with it, Virgo. You've almost made it across the finish line. It's the home stretch now. You're still feeling the weight on your shoulders, the burden. You're still having to sort through some conflict with the Five of Swords there at the bottom of the deck. You could be either this person in the foreground who is taking advantage of a lull in a disagreement in order to bet better position yourself for the future. Or it could be that you're just exhausted from this difference of opinion, squabbling back and forth, having to justify um, someone changing their mind all the time. It could be anything in the mix there, but it could be that you're more so these figures in the background who are just going to touch, uh, they want to get more in touch with their emotions and get out of their head about it. So it's like a uh, rest and recharge, a break from analyzing the situation. You could feel like your, your natural analytical nature has been on overdrive and it's kind of exhausting you. Whatever you are working toward and thinking about on overdrive, you're almost completed with your obligation or your responsibility there. The challenge that you're facing is judgment in reverse. It's saying no to make it short and sweet. There's someone that you have a lot of affinity for with the six of cups here at the bottom of the deck. Um, someone from your past, possibly, or someone that is just a new person in your life that is an energetic signature of a repeating pattern. Like they really remind you of someone that you've loved in the past in positive and perhaps also negative ways. The challenge is, though, that when this energy pops up in your life and says, hey, remember me? I ha you haven't seen me in a while. How about you re-engage with me? This is like the energy talking. So however that energy is showing up in your life, you are needing to respond to it. The challenge being saying no to it. It could look like it's an amazing thing. Like, why would I possibly say no to it? And that's probably why your analytical skills are on overdrive. Because something is telling you, like, I want to be done with this. I feel like I've been working on myself or setting up my life in a way where I don't have to repeat this pattern anymore. But then here it is offering the world to me or offering something that seems very positive, seems like it could bring joy and balance into my life. But something in this is telling you like, no, that's old energy. I need to let it stay in the past. I don't want to revive it, but it's a challenge for you right now. Your focus is on star energy. This is your purpose, your divine purpose. You're wanting to stay like focused, find like a true north, find a guiding light, metaphorically speaking. But in essence, it's like, I, I, it could be like a life purpose on a grand scale, but I feel like it's more zoomed in than that. More like tangible real life. You want, you want to be really focused on a specific objective that resonates as like aligned with your life purpose. So the long-term overarching, like, why am I here on the planet sort of vibe is at play. But I think what you're really focusing on is trying to 
make your like daily actions or short term goals or maybe even like long term goals. Maybe you're working towards something that would take a year, two years, three years. But instead of just doing it because it's available and because there's a lot of positive things surrounding it, you want to make sure that you're doing it because it aligns with who you are and your values, etc. You are probably doing this very on the sly with the, the seven of swords there at the bottom of the deck. You're wanting to conceal this from the rest of the world so that you can have some privacy, not have outside influences while you're making such an important decision. Um, yeah. Show me the recent past. What led up to this? What led up to this for my Virgos? A tower moment. Something was... Wow, they're giving me lots of like destructive words. So something was destroyed, something was decimated, something was just metaphorically burned to the ground. I hope not literally. Um, you may feel like there's some manipulation at play with the magician in reverse there at the bottom of the deck. Or you may be blaming yourself because you tried to manifest an opportunity that kind of blew up in your face. If the repeating cycle uh, relationship vibe or maybe non-relationship, but the repeating pattern that's that we were talking about earlier resonated with you. I think this tower is the part that kind of the, the, the essence that we were talking about, that negative part, like if something goes wrong. If you actually ended a relationship with someone and they're coming back in your life asking for a second chance, two of cups in reverse at the bottom of the deck as I'm shuffling around there, um, that's just, as with all tarot readings, you need to trust your own intuition, your own internal guidance system. This reading would suggest that it would be a better course of action for you, energetically speaking, to not revive that relationship. The tower is divine intervention to clear your path, to clear something out that is not working for you, that is either holding you back from something better or taking up space and, and time and attention and energy that is delaying other positive outcomes that had you, if you free that up, it's nearly never, it, nearly never. Uh, I think I'm, I think that's a double negative. Let's see how to say this right. I got to say it right for my Virgos. I'm a Virgo rising, so I know the importance of this. Um, it's almost always a positive thing when the tower moment happens because it's clearing out things that you've built, you've worked for, you want to remain in place, but every ounce of effort, every minute of time spent maintaining that or continuing to build upon that is keeping you from the thing that you actually should be doing. You know, I say should with a lowercase s um, because that's all up to your your discernment. Let's say something that would be would bring even more joy and fulfillment into your life. OK. The energy coming through from spirit, the way that spirit is seeing the situation is with the wheel of fortune. Now. I want to remind you, some of you who, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've heard me say this in the past, but I know I've been gone a lot. So some, a lot of you might be new or 
what have you, not hard, heard me say this in a while. The way I see the Wheel of Fortune is like a spiral. It's, um, let's say, there's different layers. Maybe think of it like in terms of a spiral staircase, um, where if you look down on it like a cross section, it'll be a, a pattern of events. So the, the beginning of something, let's say, the beginning of something and then the middle of something and then the ending of something. And it'll be like similar patterns that happen along the way, sequence of events. When you level up, when you learn a lesson that has kept you on the same le uh, level, layer, level, whatever, on, at the same vibration. You keep repeating these patterns, keep repeating the kind of similar sequence of events, but you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. You don't feel like you're progressing through it. The Wheel of Fortune in the Upright, to me, exemplifies that moment when the staircase to the next level opens up. And of course, this is like this esoteric metaphor in a spiral staircase. We're talking a little bit MC Escher. If sometimes the, sometimes it's a, it's a flat plane, but this is all about your perspective and your choices. Once you resonate at a, at a level that is of the higher pattern, you can, move up to the next level, quote unquote. And these are all imperfect metaphors, you guys. Sorry if this is like tedious or boring, <laughs> but it's the way I see things. So I think I'm meant to just describe it the way that I see it, right? Um, when you vibrate at a higher level, let's say, or make a different choice that's uh, healthier for you, then you get to repeat a pattern but at a higher vibration. Doesn't mean with the same person, although it could be if we're talking about relationships. More often than not, you need to release the old baggage in order to move forward fresh. Um, so the Wheel of Fortune coming up in this position to me says, Spirit is giving you an opportunity through this experience to level up in a way that you won't have to go through the same level or vibra vibration as you've been experiencing because you're close to leveling up or you have, but there are certain nuance and choices that you could make if you keep lower vibrational people or activities or habits around that could pull you back into the same vibe, the same level that you've been walking around and around for a little while. Um, okay, there. I was, I was going to mention this, but I, <laughs> I almost forgot. Um, with the moon at the bottom of the deck, I do feel like there's a vibe of needing to go into unknown territory, needing to trust the unknown a little bit. So moving forward, even though you're not exactly sure of what each step on the path is going to look like. There's certain comfort in a well-trod path. Even if it's low vibrational, it's familiar, so it's comfortable and it feels safe and it feels like tried and true and responsible. There's something about the, your path forward now. Man, many elements will feel familiar because it's still your life and it's still like a leveled up version of the patterns you've been playing out, but it's going to unfold in very different ways that could feel scary. It could evoke some sort of fear or insecurity for you with that moon card. So watch out for that. I would say if that, if that pops up for you over the coming week or two, try to trust it, try to have that faith that you know you move forward through the unknown and this is all going to work out for you in a, a beneficial way over what you've been recently experiencing. 
in the near future, we have the Eight of Cups reversed. Okay, this is either you or someone else who's recently left, coming back, probably saying the grass was not greener on the other side, something to that effect with the Seven of Cups in reverse at the bottom of the deck. Um, I don't want anybody else, or I, I was just talking to somebody else and you know, I've, I've realized that they weren't, uh, they weren't the one for me, so I wanted to come back. Or there's, there's this element of someone who walked away for their own good said, you know, everything's been fine here, but I need to look out for myself. I need to expand my horizons and I can't do that while I'm stuck here. So they left to pursue something better for themselves. This is that person, whether it's you or a person you're dealing with, coming back. And I think the vibe is going to be something along the lines of, I don't want what I think thought I wanted, or I'm not tempted by the things that enticed me to walk away. It didn't do it for me. Um, yeah, like, it's likely just to be for closure, if anything. Um, but remember, the challenge is seeing the situation for what it is and making sure that you're, and, and not necessarily reviving it. Specifically, the challenge is, are you strong enough to say no to the, no to this thing this time around? And a friend of mine just reminded me of this yesterday that, um, you know, a strong part of, of my belief system that I'll share with you now is that when we are ready to level up in life, part of the universe's method for making sure that we're actually ready, not in a tricky way, not in an asshole way, but like in a, let's not give you something that you're not ready for sort of a way, a responsible way. So, okay. <laughs> so many tangents in that sentence when you are ready to level up, the universe is going to give you a test. It's going to show you an opportunity that is everything that you had before. Maybe even the best of what you had before. So do you want to walk around that cycle again? That same level of the spiral staircase? Or do you want to say no to that thing that's on offer, telling the universe, I am ready to level up. I don't need that. What's, what's going to be the, if this is the reading for you, like if that element is for you, you will notice very specific aspects of this thing that's trying to come back into your life that are low vibrational, that bug you things that you know would not change if you invited this energy back into your life now for another go around. It might be better than the last go around, but you're able to have like far, far beyond whatever this thing is coming back now. You're able to have much, much better if you decline this thing. Okay. Your surprise energy, what's going to affect the situation that you don't see coming is the five of wands in reverse. This could be a lot of different things. It could be a person that you thought was out there dating a lot. You find, you will find out that they're just not, that they haven't been dating or they're not dating at all. Um, it could be someone who is a competitor of yours in some way, just stops trying to compete with you. Maybe they are no longer in your field or they're no longer um, it like maybe it's an actual competition of sorts, like an, an official sort of uh, match or exposition. If it's not anything specific like those examples, the more general vibe is 
someone that you expected to put up a fight or fight with you or be combative in some way isn't even a challenge. That that could mean that you just feel um, like it's it's very easy for you to navigate through their attempts to be combative in a way that used to be like a pitfall for you, but now you're navigating it like it's nothing. Like they're not a worthy competitor for you in some way. You're able to overcome their attempts to be combative much more easily. Or it could just be that you're expecting them to be combative and they're not. Okay. Show me hopes and fears. Okay. Death and the Knight of Swords in reverse. You, you want to pull off the band-aid, so to speak. You want to rip off the band-aid. You're like, if it's going to be over, if it's going to end, just get it over with. Just do it quick. Quick and dirty, over, so that I can level up. I can leave it behind with the world here at the bottom of the deck. That's really underscoring this whole vibe that I'm picking up on. It, it pairs well with the Wheel of Fortune energy. They are different cards, but they have a similar vibe in the respect of like this is more a, a portal energy, an opportunity to leave the past in the past. And you have to discern what you're going to carry with you through into the next chapter. I am getting this big le opportunity to level up vibes here. So you really want to like rip off the Band-Aid. That, that's a weird metaphor for this. Um, it's a little... I think you guys understand what I'm saying. I won't belabor the point. You're, you're like, if it's going to end, let's just do it quick and dirty, get it over with. But at the same time, that scares you a lot. Which tells me you're probably pretty attached to this, whatever it is. Let's see how this energy is going to conclude. How does this all resolve? Four of Cups in reverse. The offer is not accepted. So if this is someone that you broke up with, thought the grass was greener on the other side, decided it wasn't, come, is coming back around for another chance with you, then this is you looking at their offer and saying, no, thank you. Telling the universe, thank you so much for that test. I looked it in the face. I'm sure that it's not what I want anymore. I'm ready for new, fresh energy. It could be as early as the next day, some new opportunity knocks on your door because you, it, it all depends on, um, well, divine timing, but if you're certain in your heart, like if you're still, if you make that choice and you're still doubting and energetically holding on to the past, universe is going to allow you enough time to reconcile that in your heart before presenting you with something new. And it's all for your own good, because again, you have this opportunity to level up. If you do it in a way where you still have like heartstrings to the past, lower vibrational stuff, then that will muddy the waters with the new opportunity. So it's all gonna play out the for, for your high, highest good, as in all things, but definitely in this case. Okay, your advice, we have the devil card. See things for what they are, not what you want them to be. This energy is really enticing and it's it can be really subversive as well. It can feel like it can feel like it's not even that bad for you. And if you f if you find yourself feeling that vibe like like why is my gut telling me not to go back to this person or why is this tarot reader getting the vibe that it's not right to go back to this person? <laughs> It's because it's so like, it's so nuanced 
in the way that it's bad for you. It's hidden amongst so much stuff that's enticing that feels good. It, it's, it feels positive. Yeah, I don't know, like, think about whether it's nourishing your soul. Think about whether it's a long-term positive thing. Is it fun in the moment? Or is it supporting your, your long-term joy? Like, is it a flash in the pan? Have fun. If it's something that's meant to be short-term, let it be short-term. Let it be over. All right, I'm going to leave it there, Virgo. I hope this helped. Have a great week, and I'll see you back next time.